Black History Month is all about recognizing the accomplishments of those who may have gone unappreciated in their lifetime. But the great thing about engineering is that a good idea is a good idea, and that's just as true today as it was 200 years ago. So we're taking a look at four famous African-American engineers and their contributions to everything from locomotives to the space shuttle. Let us know if we've left out your favorite black engineer by adding them to Project Board via the link below. Elijah McCoy was born free in Canada as the son of fugitive slaves who fled Kentucky via the Underground Railroad. At the age of 15, he was sent to Edinburgh and Scotland to apprentice as a mechanical engineer. After that, he relocated to Michigan and established a home-based machine shop. McCoy was a prolific inventor, with more than 50 patents to his name. Most of these were for lubrication systems for locomotives and steam engines. McCoy's earliest patent was for an automatic lubricator with an ingeniously simple design. In the starting position, the steam from the boiler is cut off by the intake valve, and the oil and air inside the lubricator are at atmospheric pressure. When the intake valve opens, high-pressure steam enters the cylinder and pushes the piston down, while also forcing the valve stem of the lubricator upward. This opens the valve at the top of the valve stem tube and lets the steam force its way into the lubricator body, raising pressure inside the lubricator. This design works so well that railroad engineers apparently used to ask for his system by name. If you've ever wondered where the phrase, the real McCoy comes from, well, this just might be it. Engineer, entrepreneur, and political activist, Garrett Morgan had to leave school and look for work at age 14. But that didn't stop him from continuing his education. Morgan used his income as a handyman to hire a tutor and continue his studies. After spending some time working with and repairing sewing machines, and even opening his own clothing store, Morgan began to create his own inventions. The most famous of these was the so-called smoke hood, which he patented in 1912. The device used a wet sponge to filter smoke and cool the air, and it was designed to take advantage of the way smoke tends to rise by using an air intake tube that dangled near the floor. Morgan pulled out all the stops to promote his invention, including hiring white actors to play the part of the inventor for less open-minded investors. He even engaged in what might be called the first guerrilla marketing campaign, by filling a tent with noxious combustibles, setting them ablaze, and then sitting inside for 20 minutes while wearing his invention. Morgan received national attention for his invention when he used it to rescue workers who'd been trapped under Lake Erie. Two previous rescues had been tried and failed, with the rescuers themselves becoming trapped, but Morgan, his brother, and several others were able to mount a successful rescue thanks to his smoke hood. There's one other Garrett Morgan invention that you're probably familiar with, the three-position traffic signal, which he sold to General Electric in 1922 for $40,000. The only living person on our list, James West is a prolific inventor with more than 250 patents to his name. One that stands out in particular is the foil electric microphone, which West developed with Gerhard Sessler at Bell Laboratories in 1962. The term electret is a portmanteau of the words electrostatic and magnet, due to the similarity with how magnets are formed by the alignment of magnetic domains in a piece of iron. Electrets are stable, dielectric materials with permanently embedded static electric dipole moments. This means an electric microphone eliminates the need for a polarizing power supply, since it uses a permanently charged material. In fact, almost 90% of the billions of microphones produced every year are based on Sessler and West's original design. At age 88, West is still inventing today. Just last year, he was working on a device to detect pneumonia in infant lungs. Beyond his contributions to acoustic science, West co-founded the Association of Black Laboratory Employees at Bell, and spearheaded the creation of several fellowship programs that provided opportunities to grad students pursuing terminal degrees in STEM. Born in Birmingham, Alabama, decades before the Civil Rights Movement, Annie Easley started her career in pharmaceutical science until a move to Cleveland forced her to change paths. A 1955 newspaper story about a job posting for computers at what was then called the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics was the beginning of her 34-year career. She began as a mathematician and computer engineer at the Lewis Flight Propulsion Laboratory in Cleveland, continuing her education at the same time. In 1977, Easley obtained her Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from Cleveland State. Among her most notable achievements at NASA was the development and implementation of computer code that supported the Centaur high-energy upper rocket stage. In addition to contributing to the Cassini probe's 1997 flight to Saturn, Easley's work laid the foundation for launching the space shuttle, not to mention communication, military, and weather satellites. Easley was interviewed in 2001 as part of NASA's Johnson Space Center Oral History Program, and there's a link to the 55-page transcript below. There are tons of wonderful insights into the history of NASA and the civil rights movement in there, but this quote in particular stood out. When asked about the discrimination she experienced during her career, Easley said, When people have their biases and prejudices, yes, I am aware. My head is not in the sand. But my thing is, if I can't work with you, I will work around you. I was not about to be so discouraged that I'd walk away. That may be a solution for some people, but it's not mine. 
these four people are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to African-American contributions to engineering. Check out the links below to learn more, and be sure to join the discussion on Project Board. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.